Um, I started attending First UU when we first moved back to Springfield in 2012. And shortly after that, we met some of our fellow UUs, Bill, and, Bill Stoll and Leslie Sawyer. And Leslie told us of a, her dream to build the area's first cage-free, no-kill cat shelter. And being cat people, naturally, we were interested and supported the efforts. And the first time we went out there, the shelter was in an old barn that they had kind of cobbled together to where it could hold a number of cats. And today, we have built a, a fine shelter. And of course, there's still a lot more cats than we can take care of. But uh, the, the cats you see there, you walk in and the cats are playing in rooms or napping, which cats do quite well, or just uh, getting whatever other care they need. And they're, they're in large rooms together or smaller rooms together. That's where frequently a litter of kittens will stay in a room until they're ready to wean. All of our cats are, they're spayed or neutered. They have their medical treatment and they're ready to go. But Leslie, is a, a wonderful lover of animals. She moved here just so that she could do this. And she, uh, she extends her compassion for all creatures to her vegan diet, which she also will discuss. And I just consider her one of the most wonderful people that I know. And it's a pleasure to introduce Leslie to you today. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Leslie Sawyer, and my pronouns are she uh, and her. And uh, let's see, I have curly hair and blue eyes, and I'm wearing a flowery dress today. Um, but gosh, I, I just have to start. It's um, my history with this this church goes back to when Bill and, and I first moved here from Chicago, and um, we used to come on a really regular basis when we didn't have. 110 cats to take care of and a shelter and everything and um, you know life happens and we created our dream and because of that we haven't been here in several years and um, it's actually quite emotional being back here because um, I missed I missed this as, as our community and um, Bill and I have been talking about ways in which hopefully we can be more involved because um, we would we would love to be able to come back and and uh, be a part of this wonderful, wonderful um, community of people. Um, so I've been asked to share my story, and um, and I I understand this is my story, and so you know don't feel bad if you can't relate. You know everyone's different, but I'm going to share about my truths and what I've learned throughout my life, and what I'm continuing to learn, um, especially in relationship to. Um, animals. Uh, my parents share, uh, tell me stories about when I was just a little toddler and I would go into hysterics if they killed a bug and I would cry and carry on and I would do my best to try to save, save the, you know, the bugs and everything. And um, they always thought that was a little weird because they weren't like that, but somehow, you know, I was and um, I also remember a time in which my dad ran over a snake with the lawnmower and the snake was still alive and I was just a little grade schooler and I ran into the house and I grabbed uh, band-aids <laughs> and I was bandaging the snake thinking okay you know this is what we do and um, I wasn't afraid of the snake it didn't intimidate me I, I just wanted to help it um, my family, um, we, I grew up uh, on a, uh, we had a boat and we would, my dad especially really loved to fish. And um, it was really, in fact, even today, I still think about watching the fish suffocate and feeling their pain, just having this intense connection with what they were going through. Um, and so who I am as a person, that's kind of like where my roots come from. 
Um, there was times I wish I could shut it off um, because there is so much suffering. Um, and there was a time in my life where I really, really tried to shut it down because the, the emotions of it was uh, pulled on me. But as I got older, I realized um, it's really a gift and, um, and it's really a, a blessing to be able to share this in front of you and feel safe and not feel embarrassed by it because there was a, a large time in my life in which I was um, embarrassed at, by my connection with, um, with other creatures' emotions. Um, so I appreciate this being a safe space to kind of share that. Um, you know, being raised in today's culture, you know, uh, a lot of times, you know, we get the motion, the message that animals are ours to use, to do what we please, um, that they're here for us to, to, to do whatever. Um, and I, so growing up in a culture, and even my own family, um, you know, our dogs were our pets, and we loved them like family, but it's okay to eat a cow. It's, it's okay you know, to you know, kill a fish. My dad uh, had a gun and, it, you know, he, he wouldn't tell me he was going hunting, but I knew what he did with the gun. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it was, it was, I was brought up just kind of believing uh, that it was okay to do what we wanted to with animals. Um, you know, at dinner time, it, mom was like, okay, you need to, you need to eat your meat. You will not be healthy if you didn't eat your meat. And so we, you know, I remember we had our portion of meat and our vegetable and our starch and that our plate was all portioned and we were expected to eat everything. And so growing up, I, I almost, I didn't really question too much about it. I, I somehow rationalized that, that animals and that were produced for food were somehow separate that somehow they didn't feel that somehow they just didn't care that they were they didn't know any different so it was okay for them to stay caged and to be miserable and live in horrible conditions and to be produced for food because they didn't know any better i don't know this is kind of like my thinking at the time um and it wasn't until my early 20s that I got a flyer in the mail, and I'll never forget this. It's a life-changing experience. Um, I got a flyer from PETA, and in it, it talked about um, animals that were used for um, uh, testing on cosmetics. And so there was this thing you could send away for this free vegetarian starter kit. And I, I thought, oh, I wonder what that's all about. I really didn't know much about vegetarianism. You know, this is going back 30 years. You know, it's like people that were identified as vegetarians, you kind of looked at like they were like from another planet. So, so I didn't know anyone who was vegetarian. I didn't know that. But I was kind of curious and I wanted to learn more. And so I sent away for their vegetarian kit. And then I started learning about factory farming. And I was shocked. I thought, Oh, don't all animals come from like old McDonald's farm, you know? It's like all happy cows and chickens running around. And I didn't even know that that factory farming was even a thing. And so I started to look into it. And the more I looked into it, the more horrified I became. And I started watching some videos about it and really educating myself. And so the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, eating meat doesn't correspond with who I am. And so there was this incongruence and it's like, wait, I don't have to sustain my life at the expense of leading to suffering of others that I could be healthy. I never realized I could be healthy without meat. And so I started to cut out meat and um, needless to say, I didn't quite understand how to be healthy um, being a vegetarian, and I did go through a phase in which I pretty much binged on French fries and uh, pasta, <laughs> and I really did. I mean, I, in my early 30s, I went to the doctor, and the doctor was very concerned about me because I was borderline obese with 
cholesterol that was extremely high. I'm like, how could I have high cholesterol if I don't eat meat? And, but I was eating a lot of saturated fat, and I didn't understand the correlation between all that. And, um, but actually, the doctor gave me the best wake-up call I could have gotten, as he said, if I didn't change certain things in my lifestyle, that I would live a very shorter, I would live a shorter, unhealthy life. And that was my wake-up call. I'll never forget, I was 32 years old. So again, I didn't want to go back to eating meat. And so I really started to change my diet. I started to learn more about healthy foods and eating more whole foods, not processed foods, eating more fresh fruits and vegetables, and learning more about protein. You know, one of the, one of the biggest questions I get um, from people is, but how do you get your protein? And, um, and I have to say that uh, it, it was a learning curve, but I get, actually, I probably get more protein than many people who actually eat meat. Um, so, you know, I, I learned about different types of powders I can add to my drinks and um, meat alternatives and tofu and legumes. And actually kale has a lot of protein in it. Um, so vegetables, there are certain vegetables that have a lot of protein, um, grains. And so, um, so I started to incorporate those um, protein into my diet, more protein. And so before I knew it, my cholesterol went down naturally. I'm now, my cholesterol, I go to the doctor now and the doctor's like, what are you doing? And, um, and so, you know, my, my cholesterol's down. I sleep great. I have so much energy. I can't even tell you guys. It's, you know, I, uh, you know I'm getting towards 60 now. And, you know, I, I watch some of my, my same age peers and some of the struggles that they're dealing with, with their health and just their activity and their well-being. And, and, um, and I really attribute, attribute a lot of my health to the, the choices in my food. And, um, and I do exercise on a regular basis, um, which I think is very important. And so I do, I take care of my body. And, um, and so, you can be healthy and not have to eat meat. In fact, like I said, I don't eat meat and I, and I feel as healthy, if not healthier, than a lot of my, my age, age mates. Um, and it's really interesting, too, as far as being a vegetarian. When I, when I went vegetarian 30 years ago, you couldn't just walk into the local store and get vegetarian sub, you know, meat substitutes. You know, it was a... Um, you know, you had to go to a specialty store and, and pay a lot of money. And so I'm so grateful that um, there's so much access now to, uh, to alternatives to, to things like that. Oh, I forgot to cue, I'm sorry, the, the slideshow. Um, I did bring some, some slides, and I don't know if that can be cued to, to roll through as I'm talking because it may make some sense. It'll show some pictures I just sent just so you can understand some of the history um, behind my story. Um, so as I got older, I learned a little bit more. So I, I learned, you know, with the animals, okay, the animal welfare, and also animals also relates to like my clothing, you know, wait, leather? I never thought about where leather came from. Um, that's, you know, that comes from the skin of an animal or, or even silk. I didn't really think about that. What about the products that I'm using on my body, the lotions are, did animals have to suffer in order for that lotion to be made? Um, or my household products, my cleaners, you know, so it, it really shed some light as far as these products just don't appear out of the sky, that they all have a story. And does that story of that product correspond with who I am? Um, so as I got older, I became more sensitive towards the environment. And I've always been a big nature person. I've always had the greatest respect for our wonderful planet Earth. And, um, and then I started to learn about how the production of animals for meat impacts the environment. And it was like, oh my goodness. I never had thought about that as I was older or younger, but I actually just recently, I wanted to get some more up-to-date statistics on this, and it's pretty darn amazing. 80% um, of deforestation, 80% of deforestation 
is due to cattle ranching. And so 60% um, of biodiversity loss is due to meat production. And the biodiversity it has to do with our ecosystem. It's, it's what holds everything together, what makes this wonderful earth we have work. So 60% loss is due to meat production. The overfarming of crops is taking an impact on our soil quality. And that is, you know, our soil without enriched soil, we can't, you know, the earth basically dies. Um, there is excessive water use used to raise crops, provide for the, the animals used for meat and the slaughter process. And then the immense amount of greenhouse gas emissions from animal waste, food production, the transport of animals and slaughter and the slaughter process is huge. And this is gonna be pretty amazing. Okay, beef, the production of beef is actually the, the thing that takes the greatest toll on the environment out of all the, the animals used for, for meat. They all do, but beef is the main culprit. And this is an astounding statistic that one kilogram of beef production, one kilogram, requires 25 kilograms of grain and 15,000 liters of water to produce only one kilogram of beef. So when I think about that, and I think about our, the resources of this earth and how precious it is, that is just astounding to me. And I think about how those resources can go to helping the earth and the people and everything instead of producing something that one kilogram of beef it just it just doesn't measure for me as far as where our other needs could go um so that was really amazing and so i was so you know sometimes people when i talk to people about my diet and everything it's like oh my gosh i i can't ever go without meat i mean it's like i, I just can't give up my my hamburger or my steak or whatever um it's not really about giving it up. It's about the tiny changes because each of those tiny changes makes a difference. I remember way back when, when I, w I, I was pretty young, we did meatless Mondays. So one day a week, we just didn't have meat in our diet. That makes a difference. Just that one day, if you do that one day every week, it does make a difference. Or maybe one meal a day. Oh, that for breakfast, you're not going to eat bacon and sausage anymore. Okay, so just one meal a day, that all adds up. And then maybe once you get into it, maybe you'll decide later, hey, you know, this isn't so bad after all. I can do two meals a day, or I can do three, three days a week or whatever. It's those baby steps. When I first went vegetarian, I didn't, um, I didn't just go all in. You know, it was, it was baby steps, and I, I had to figure out what was going to work for me. But everything makes a difference. Um, if you go, you living vegetarian nowadays is much different than it was back then. And so there's all kinds of recipes online. And so just Google vegetarian recipes online. There's all kinds of meal plans. Uh, Bill, my husband and I, for years now, we've been ordering uh, a box of food. And you could, you know, a lot of people might be familiar with HelloFresh. Um, we actually get Green Chef, which is more organic, and and um, and then you can just put in vegan or vegetarian, and you, it's, all the ingredients are there. You just put together the recipe, and it's all balanced, nutritional, nutritionally good stuff. So it really isn't that hard, as hard nowadays to go vegetarian as it was. Um, just real quick, I know I've been talking for a while, um, but all of so I. I believe that who I am, my truth, led me to be here in Missouri. Um, some people may know about the story of the owl, which is ironic. It was an animal that actually led my way to, to being here in Missouri. Um, and if anyone's interested in my owl story, I'll share that with you later. Um, 
but an owl brought me here and I believe I'm here for a purpose. This area of the country really is horrible as far as, in my opinion, the treatment of animals, no matter what it is. And um, cats really have a tough time of it out here. Um, all you have to do is just open the internet and you'll see all kinds of horrible stories about uh, hoarding situations and kittens being dumped and dogs being dumped. And I didn't even realize that people just dump animals randomly. I, it was a new thing moving from Chicago out here um, that people actually just dump animals. Um, but I believe I'm here for, for a purpose. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I have a table up here with all kinds of information about Eden Animal Haven. It's really been um, quite a journey. Um, and I just have to say, I couldn't do it without my husband, Bill, back there. Um, and my family support. And um, we, we moved out here not knowing anyone. And, um, and through forming relationships, and this is one of the communities in which we were able to form relationships that really helped us get off the ground. Um, and so it was because of the relationships and because I put my dream out there, it's like, this is my dream. I want to have a place that rescues cats, but that cats can have a good quality of life in which they aren't euthanized to make rooms, but in which I have rooms in which the cats can play in. And, um, and so it was really interesting because I just shared my story with people and my dream and you know kind of like you know build it and they will come well i shared my vision and before i knew it and you'll see through some of the slides that maybe we're showing how we started from nothing and out of nothing we are now saving last year we saved 365 feline lives um, that otherwise probably wouldn't have made it and um and we are, are going to continue to grow and again it's it's getting the word out to people um, to, to help people understand that we, we can make the world a better place. And whether it's helping animals or helping people, whatever, um, but it's, we all have that power. We all have that deep down, we are all good people and we all can make a positive difference in this world. And so if I had to just wrap something up, is, and it's been a journey and I'm continuing to learn more about who I am, but for each and every one of you to figure out your truth, to dig in and figure out what your truth is and are your choices in line with who you are, who you really are, not who people want you to be, not what society tells you you should be, not what your parents brought you up to, believing you should be, but who you are, and for you to live that truth and not be ashamed of it, even though it goes against the grain. And I am blessed that I am living my truth. And I am blessed by those who are here today to hear my story. I've never shared it this much in public before. Um, and, uh, and, just encourage you all to, to live your truth. And, uh, and when it comes to animals, just ask yourself what your truth is regarding animals, our planet, your health, and, um, and what you can do to make this world a better place. Thank you.